Okay, my camera couldn't take the video, so I had to get another camera. Uh, this video is going to be on the fuel cell. I got the fuel cell and all the fittings and everything done today. I am completely soaked. It's been raining all day. Uh, it's been fun. But anyhow, um, this is a two and a half gallon fuel cell. And I know you're saying that's a big fuel cell for a little go-kart, but um, when we run these things, we literally run them all day long. So I don't feel bad about putting that on there. Uh, I found this on eBay for around 40 or $45. And I really wanted a one gallon one, but the one gallon one was 90. So I have the ability, because this has A&M fittings, these are Dash 10 A&M fittings, I could work something out and drain the fuel out very easily from, from this system. Let me, let me go over everything. It has four ports, two on top, two on bottom. They came with a couple extra caps. Um, the dash in caps you do not have to use any thread sealant on, which to me is a great deal because there's 45 angle. Um, it's like a ferrule set up in there. If you guys know what that means. This is a half inch fuel barb, which is my vent. It comes up, I ran out of tubing, so I put a 90 right there. Goes down to a fuel filter that I put on the frame. Now the fuel filter it acts as a vent and a one-way valve. It, it don't allow crud to come in. That's my main concern was that is not letting anything that had the ability to come back in. So on the inside of this, I have two layers of fuel cell foam. So the layers of foam comes up to the top. Uh, that will take away some of the space that I could put fuel in, but hey, that's okay. This is two and a half gallons, you know, and that's a six and a half horse engine. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a cap. And this is a... What it is, is that there's a 1 8 MPT port right there, which is designed for fuel gauges and stuff like that, and I put a cap on it right there, dash 10 cap. I put a um, fuel barb right there, and I do have the thread sealing on that one, because you need it. And I run the fuel line, there's my filter. Now I ran it away from the pull start. And everywhere I could, you see, I got um, zip ties. It's away from my on and off switch. It comes up here to my pulse fuel pump. If you hold it this way, the two sides, that is the in, that is the out, and that is the vacuum. Now, it looks kind of messy, but... I wanted to support it and keep it from bouncing around. The fuel line comes up, goes in right there. It's a tight fitting, so I don't need a a um, hose clamp on it. This is the vacuum from the um, valve cover. It's actually the windage on the inside of the motor, so it causes a pulse and that's what runs this fuel pump. Uh, I put that barb there, uh, I believe, uh, what is it, is that one quarter? Yeah, that's one quarter. Now the tube is a little bit bigger right here and it just slid and it was real loose right there and that's why I have this uh, um, hose clamp on there to tighten it down so I have good vacuum to this to this fuel pump. This is just a called plumber's hardware, and I connected it to right there where my finger is. Is the original? Uh, that's a eight millimeter head, and that's a ten millimeter bolt. And I, I buffed this down so there's no sharp edges. And I put this high, high above the engine, so I was having problems with my first one. I done. I put it down low, and all these hoses were kinking. And you can't do that when you're doing a fuel system up. You can't have a kinked hose. This one 
goes to the motor. It comes around, it ties off right there, and it goes down through here and it goes through the original location. You can see it right there and it goes through the original port so I could still use my on and off right here. To me that was very important. Uh, later on when I uh, if I ever go to a Makuni, I'll have to do an inline on and off switch. Uh, this, the frame is 3 16 I had a frame that this fits on. Um, 3 16 thick by 1 and an eighth. And you can see I go, it goes everywhere, it goes across a a frame piece I have welded it down and this one was kind of sitting out in the open so right underneath this there's a piece that goes there's a piece that goes across so you could see that's really really sturdy and that's that was important um, a quick a quick answer to your questions I know you're going to be asking why a two and a half gallon tank when I get these boogers going um, we have people here all day, and they literally, my go-karts literally run all day long. We're talking 8 to 10 hours. And I'm building them up extra heavy-duty, extra extra sturdy, so I can uh, um, they'll withstand the abuse, and I don't have to monkey with them. My motor, I've got a... An adjustable carburetor you can see the adjuster screw there I uh, 100% recommend that to everybody get you a carburetor that you can adjust and you will stop a lot of stuff another reason for the aluminum tank is to get rid of the rust the the fuel cells that are their fuel tanks up here rust and they cause a lot of problems so what am I doing overall here I'm stopping a lot of problems I built a small there's a piece of plumber tape right there that comes up and you can see a uh, quarter twenty screw going in two places and this is old mud flap material here and right here and there's an angle iron or angle iron aluminum piece underneath here what this is is a fender when this tire is going to be turning I don't want crap throwing all up inside that area so this is protected and the tire when it throws it'll be throwing up this way and so that's why I did stuff like that um, to me this is the best this has ever been I got new brakes on there got my new clutch uh, oil change eventually I'm gonna do a stage one on this and you would not believe what a stage one will do for these motors. It makes them more efficient. It makes them run cooler. It makes them run a lot better. I've had this motor on this thing probably 20 years. The, the original Briggs and Stratton. I don't know what it was about the carburetor because I, I could never, never get it to work. And after a little bit of monkeying with something for so long, you just tend to I'm going to throw this against the wall, you know. <laughs> but uh, here's my vent tube that comes up. And I have it supported, which helps support all this stuff. I don't want all this stuff bouncing around. Now, I know it looks confusing, but it's really a pretty simple system. Uh, eventually, I hope this heat doesn't burn this. If it does, I have some sleeve I could put over this to stop that from getting burnt but eventually when I do the stage one this muffler will come off and a pipe will come out to a muffler um, so these are things I do to build the heck out of these you can see I did the double bumper on it all I got to do now is put some fuel in here and set that carburetor Oh, Lordy, come on. There we go. Now you turn that. Okay. See, there's the foam. And so, 
the fuel's not going to slosh around right there. And I think that's a pretty cool system. And it locks down like that. So my next phase is to set the carbs and put fuel in it and let them go. I believe with a fuel tank like that, this thing, I mean, just keeping the weight low, it can run, it should be able to run all day. It got so bad, we used to fill these things up two or three times a day. We'd run them out of gas and have to push them all the way back up here and fill them up. Well, I think I cured all that. And I'll, I'll keep a cover over all that system to keep it clean and running good. I replaced a bearing in that wheel. I found a bearing that was bad. So uh, that gave me a reason to tear all into that and redo that stuff. Um, who'd imagine a, a go-kart 30 years old is still going strong and going good. And it gets used. That's the thing about it. You build them right and you'll have it for a long time. And uh, like this one, uh, it was crashed into a tree at full force, at full speed. And that's where I put the ATV stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll go over that one on another video. And I've gone over it. It looks like crud because the paint's peeling off, but I got a fuel cell on it to do the same thing for it to run all day, all day and all night and all week if I wanted to. So anyhow, a lot of good information right here, a lot of good ideas. If you do the if you do anything like this, have safety in mind, and that's why I've tied things off, did things off the way I did. And so uh Guys, have a good one. Take a lot of information from this because this is really a good video. And uh, you'll see more stuff like this. Like I said, my videos are here to teach you good ways to do things. And um, this will be a good one. And uh, you guys have a good one. We'll catch you on the next video.